Welcome back. I'm Crispy, and I I love role playing games, and I enjoy I enjoy the innovation that characters uh, or players bring through their characters in these fictional worlds that we create together. I I'm very I I, I say innovation. I like to be surprised, and you know, we've been the last few weeks we've been playing this game. This is uh, Heroes Unlimited Two. It's an older game, it's still in print. It's been in print for a long time. I've already given my thoughts on the game in a in a brief review, but I thought I would revisit this because this is a, a bit of a, a an epiphany that I've had over the last uh, few days, and we've been talking about it with some people that have just been introduced to the group, brand new to this, brand new to the system, brand new to Palladium, uh, and it, it's easy to be overwhelmed when with any system when you get the initial introduction, and the uh, the happy news is. This new character, this new player that has has rejoined the group for a few months, and we're glad to have him back. He's immediately seized on the opportunity that this game presents, and and what is that opportunity? Well, we were talking about it a little bit today. I had a chance to to bump into him, and we were talking about how in a superhero game, there's the game really starts to shine when when the player uh, moves their character away from prescribed moves prescribed moves moves being like in a game like this and i have another game here haven't played this in a while but we did play this uh, for a few years Uh, in starfinder the the actions your character takes are all very explicitly written out They're, they're all in that rule book they're they're scripted in the sense that the implementation, the manifestation of that character's ability, is is painstakingly put out for from the game to the player, so that it can be used by the character. And the character then, when they do their move, it's basically named move. So here's your here you can do this, or you can do that, or you can do this other thing. Now there's a lot of choices there, and the choices, depending on the class, they can have different flavor. But that's not where a game like a superhero game like this really shines. What do I mean by that? Well, the advantage of having the prescribed moves, I do the thing, and here's the thing as it's described in the book, is that you could have what what franchises like to term operational excellence. There's consistency. So whether or not you order the the subway sandwich here or across the the continent somewhere else you you already kind of know you're going to get the same quality that this cheeseburger from this franchise here if it's the same franchise should be at least recognizable if not indistinguishable from someplace across the world that's different a different place but it's the same product and I suppose if that was your goal, if you wanted consistency, then having every move that a, a, a character can make explicitly outlined. I keep using the word explicitly. I, I may be I may be misusing that word, but what I'm what I'm referring to is it's codified in the rules. Here in the rules, this move looks like this. And it always looks like this, and it interacts with the world in these ways and not in these other ways. Okay, well, that that works, and I think that's there's a place for that, and there and that certainly that exists in this game as well. But what where the superhero game really takes off is when the imagination of the player for that 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 superpower really starts to to go in strange new directions. I'm going to give you a couple examples of powers that our current group has. As an example of of just how far you can push the envelope with this, there's two in particular that I wanted to share. They're both considered major powers, and and major powers, of course, uh, as as the name implies, are going to have a higher degree of influence on the world than a minor power is. But when you, I share with these with you, you'll I think you'll agree, it's crazy powerful. The first one I wanted to share is called Mechanolink. And at first you think, oh, so he's he's this character is able to interface with mechanical things, machines at a uh, with all sorts of natural ability. That's true. That is part of the of the ability. It's the second part that had really uh, 
<laughs> I, I'll say had ignited the imagination of the player and the rest of the group. Because what we like to do is when these these random abilities are rolled, because we like to randomize the the superheroes, it's kind of fun to do that. You end up with weird combinations. We like to we like to brainstorm just how what you could do with this power. Here's what the power is called. It's called computer merge. Now keep in mind, this is a game that was written before the the prevalence and the kind of internet of everything uh, it became a thing. And so I'm sure when this was originally written, the uh, these few first few sentences weren't considered to be quite as powerful as what they have become now. Here's what it says. The character can merge and communicate with any computer system regardless of preventative programs, codes, or defenses. Okay. Just that one sentence had us spiraling down rabbit holes of, wait a second, what does that mean in the age, in the current age? Because we're playing it in a modern setting. You, Regardless of preventative programs, codes, or defenses, the link can be as direct as touching the machine itself or can be remote if the machine is some kind of modem. Well, almost everything is Wi-Fi now or wireless of some sort. And that first sentence is, regardless of preventative programs, codes, or defenses. So immediately the question became, how much money do I have access to? <laughs> and the answer had to be, is the more we talked about it, we're like, well, virtually unlimited. In the only thing that would limit you is that if you skim too much money off the financial system, you'll have every government in the world trying to assassinate you. Uh, you could read everyone's messages. There would be no secret stored on an electronic device that wouldn't be available to this person if they could get into the network. And since most things are connected to the, to the web, it's crazy. So we were thinking about... Now, there's, there are some limitations. The only limitation is if, if accessing an intelligent system, so a system with an AI a true AI, well, then you can't change that. You, you're, you run into this level of self-programming that you can't just immediately overwrite. But why would you even care about that? You know, online gambling is a thing. Why wouldn't you just fix that? Uh, very, very interesting. At first, we were like, well, well, okay, so you can drive things well. You're, you're good with machines. But then we're reading this, and we're going down these rabbit holes of, wait a second, no computer defense, no password can keep you out. That's crazy. <laughs> so that's just one. Another one that I wanted to share with you is this, again, on the surface, all right, that seems kind of, you know, no big deal. Sure, it's good. It's not a, it's not a bad power at all. It's called create force field. And as the name implies, you can create a field around yourself as, as armor uh, you can renew that field, you know, on a certain, there's, it gives, the game does give some mechanics on this of how, how much time is expended to, to put forward one of these force fields and how many points of force field energy you have to use, how quickly those points refresh. But we started thinking more about this because the, there's nothing in here that says the force field has to be anchored somewhere. You can change the orientation of the force field. You can change the shape of the force field. The force field can be invisible. The force field can be, um, you may have multiple force fields at the same time. So, so then the question, again, as we brainstorm these, what can, how could you use these force fields? What, what innovative way could you employ this? And, and one, of the, one of the thoughts that came to us was, how thick is the force field? And we say, well, it can't be thick because if it's right up against, it's a. If you make it as armor for yourself, for example, it's invisible. It's right next to your skin or right around you, and and it's flexible. Well, we came to, and this might be different for your group. So I'm not saying that this is the only way to interpret this, but in our group, we decided that the force field 
had no thickness. Now, that led us to all sorts of other things. That, what if you turned the force field on its edge and you made it invisible? And the car that was chasing you hit that force field on its edge, which is a, essentially the sharpest edge possible. It's one electron thick or what have you. Wouldn't it just cut that thing in half? What if you were to make force fields at neck height, horizontal? Um, what would that do? What, what about making spheres around people? <laughs> like, what would that do? We, had to, we talked about all this. There's, there's the, the scripted move, which is I create a wall. But then there's the innovative war move, which is I create the wall this way and then another one this way, and I make this one visible and this one invisible. There's so many different ways that you could use this. It turns something that is, a, well, this is just a defensive thing. It's not a big deal. It turns it into something that could be crazy. And it creates these, uh, these, these moments in the game which are completely unexpected, surprising, things that I, I, I love. I love being surprised when players have their characters do something that, well, that's wild. What, why, what are you doing? That's crazy. Um, I love it. Now, depending on your group, you may not. But for us, and our focus is staying in character the whole time, it leads to these great opportunities for players to describe these incredible things happening. Um, and depending on the tone of the game, it can be devastating. Uh, things like uh, creating a force field. Uh, just in closing, I, I wanted to share with you this new, again, I mentioned already, had a, a player join. Um, He's he's been on and off. He's been working through the summer, so he's been away. And he he came back for a few months. And I said, okay, we're gonna, just to warn you, we're playing Heroes Unlimited two, and it's not at all like the other games we've been playing. His randomly generated powers for his his hero is alter physical structure stone, and gravity manipulation. And I don't want to bore you with all of the recap of the of the session. What all I wanted to say is that rather than him focusing on how many attacks his move would make, he he we we talked a bit about it and said if you're doing something big, it's going to take more of your attacks, and you have a certain number of attacks you can do per round. And we talk about the mechanics of the game, and I want to make sure that he understands them. But then when when the game started and he's fighting this summoned demon and it's huge 16 feet tall and he's he looks like michelangelo's david a marble statue and he's manipulating gravity which means he can he can have anti-gravity flight he can make things lighter and then make things heavier there's a point in the game where you can see it just clicks for this player he in his character he's describing lifting up a small jet and slamming it down on this uh on this foe and just, just it's just so cool it was such an it was such an intense scene and and everyone at the table is just envisioning this because we've seen the we've seen the movies the avengers and what have you or and um it was great it was it was just a really fantastic experience at the same time we have another uh player a, a good friend of mine and he's looking much more towards the what is the prescribed move that my character has more in line with this this type of game where there's not the expectation that characters or players are going to bring that that degree of innovation it's already in there this is what it does this is how it always looks and um and that's that's being that's a bit of a work in progress as we try to move more towards this. I don't know what the right term is for it. I'm going to say free form, but it's it's really the it's not so much free form as it's it's an innovation. You're it's looking for innovative ways without looking for a prescribed. This always does this. Again, both exist in here, but it really shines when. The um, we're not spending time calculating the weight of this and the weight of that, and 
oh, how many actions is that? I guess that's going to be two or three or four action or attacks or what, how, what is that going to be? Instead, it's just role play. It's what it is, is it's the players uh, speaking as their characters, describing their characters' actions in the world. Uh, I trust them to not try to just win the game, but I also trust that they'll use these powers in innovative and exciting ways. And that's the real beauty of it. Uh, moving away from just my guy can do A, B, or C to there's this other way I can use this. And then having that character do that in, in a way, it was, it's, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a breakthrough in our understanding of how to play a, a superhero role-playing game. And what does that look like? Uh, I don't know if that's helpful to you. I hope it is. I apologize. I'm still fiddling around with the, the audio on the, on my, my recording suite here. I'm not sure if I've got it. I think I may have made it worse um, before the audio sync was way off and it was driving me crazy, but I think I fixed that and introduced new problems for, to drive me crazy. That's just the way it works. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I, I appreciate you spending the time and, and uh, please uh, leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this moving away from just, I can do, you know, these are my six options I can do moving away from that and into something that's, that's more limitless, uh, Still using the mechanics, of course, and that puts a little more onus on me. How much damage is it when the plane smashes into the demon? A lot. It's a lot of damage, and I've got to figure that out. I've, the, the game does give some indications as to, well, what would that be? And I try to, I, I look at the, those as guideposts. So is it, you know, the da would it be the damage of a missile? Would it be the damage of... Uh, a speeding car or what, you know, that sort of thing. And so I can, I can, I'm not perfect at this, but I'm getting better at approximating. And then afterwards we'll look it up and we'll figure out and see, did I shortchange the character? Did I, did I shortchange the player? Did, would he, should that something more have happened there? And we'll talk about that. And it's a learning experience. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Heroes Unlimited 2. Check it out. Bye.